In the previous several lectures, we discussed LC circuits. Now, let's examine the following example that deals with an LC circuit. So suppose we place a fully charged capacitor into an electric circuit with an inductor of inductance of 100 millihenries. Assume the capacitor has a capacitance of 6 microfarads and the voltage across the plates of our capacitor initially is 120 volts. So let T, the time of 0 seconds, be the time when we connect the capacitor and our inductor into our closed LC electric circuit as shown in this diagram. So in part A, we want to find the quantity of charge that is found on the capacitor initially at a time of zero seconds. So to find that, we essentially have to use the following equation that we derived in the lecture on LC electric circuits. So, the quantity of charge on the capacitor at any given moment in time is equal to Q0 multiplied by cosine of omega multiplied by T. Now we're assuming the phase angle is zero. So Q0 is simply equal to the product of the capacitance and our initial voltage on our capacitor V0. So Q is equal to the following equation. Now, Let's plug in our t of 0 seconds. So when the t is 0, cosine of 0 becomes 1. And so our q at a time of 0 seconds is equal to c multiplied by v0, which is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. That gives us 7.2 times 10 to negative 4 coulombs. Now, let's move on to part B. What is the electric current flowing through the inductor at a time of zero seconds? So initially, all the charge is stored on our capacitor, and that means no electrons flow within our electric circuit. So initially, at a time of zero seconds, there is no electric current inside our inductor. Now, let's check that using the following equation. So we derived this equation in our lecture on LC electric circuit. So I, our electric current through the inductor, is equal to the angular frequency multiplied by Q0, which was calculated in part A, multiplied by sine of omega multiplied by T. Now when T is zero, we have sine of zero becomes zero. And so our I is zero, set, is zero amps, so this checks out. Now let's move on to part C. Now we want to find the maximum electric current through our inductor. So the maximum electric current is given by when our sine of this product is equal to 1. In that case, I is simply equal to this result. So I max is equal to omega multiplied by Q0. Now Q0 was calculated in part A. So Q0 is equal to this quantity which we calculated in part A. So omega is simply equal to 1 divided by the square root of our L, the inductance multiplied by C, our capacitance. So we replace omega with this quantity. So Q0 is this value, L is equal to 1 or 0 0.1 Henry, and C is equal to 6 times 10 to negative 6 farads. So multiply, divide, and we get about 0.93 amps is the maximum quantity of electric current that flows through our inductor. So notice, when there is a maximum amount of electric current flowing through our inductor, there is no electric charge stored on the plates of our capacitor. Now let's move on to part D. Find the frequency and the period of oscillation. So we know frequency depends on our angular velocity or omega. So frequency is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. Now omega is equal to 1 divided by the square root of L multiplied by C. So this becomes as follows. So we plug in our values for L and C and we multiply and divide and we get about 205 hertz or 205 seconds to the negative 1. 
Now, to find the period, we simply take the reciprocal of 1 divided by the frequency, and that gives us 1 divided by 205, which is equal to about 0.005 seconds. So that's the period, that's how long it takes to make one full cycle. Now, let's move on to part E find the energy inside our inductor at a time of 0.03 seconds. So we essentially want to apply the following equation that we were able to derive in the lecture on energy storage inside LC circuits. So the quantity of energy stored inside our inductor at any given moment in time is equal to this equation, where our omega is simply our angular frequency. CRT is the time, Q0 is our maximum quantity of electric charge stored in the capacitor, and C is our capacitance. Now, we can replace omega with 1 divided by square root of L multiplied by C. Now we're ready to plug in our values. So Q0 was found in part A. Our C is given to us, our T is given to us, and our L is also given to us. So we plug those values into our calculator and we get 0 0.031 joules of energy is stored within our inductor when our time is 0.031. 0.03 seconds. Finally, let's move on to part F. Find the total quantity of energy inside our electric circuit. Remember, because energy is conserved, the total quantity of energy inside our electric circuit, inside our LC circuit, remains constant. It oscillates back and forth from the energy at this to the energy in our inductor, but the total quantity always remains constant. So Q is equal to Q naught squared divided by 2C, which was derived in the lecture on our storage of energy inside LC circuits. So Q squared is this quantity squared divided by 2 times the capacitance gives us 0 0.0432 joules is the amount of energy that is stored inside our LC circuit that contains an inductor and a capacitor.